The good news is that just this week, the CDC, in concert with the Federal Drug Administration, or the FDA, has now allowed the test to occur at state and local public health laboratories who are approved to do this test. Um, the other good thing is that the company that makes the test that we use to diagnose influenza has now added this new coronavirus onto the test. We expect that that will roll out probably early next week, so that will really increase our toolkit to specifically diagnose people. Um, in terms of Alabama, again, I think we need to think about this as in not if, but when. I'm pretty sure if the pattern holds for other parts of the country that we're going to see a case or cases here. Um, is that cause for alarm? I think it's cause for vigilance, um, it's cause for concern, and it's cause for preparedness. Remember that the majority of people who get this virus have a mild to moderate illness, so we have to keep remembering that. Um, but again, be prepared and know that it can get serious and severe in some cases. Most states have had a pandemic influenza plan for, for several years, and pandemic influenza is basically what we're seeing now. It's just turned out not to be influenza. It's something like corona, the COVID-19. So I think we're in a good position. Um, people should know, though, that the concern here is that the healthcare system is already working at maximum, right? I mean, our hospital is always full. We're always really busy. And so if you think about it, um, you know, if you, if you think about having an extra 500 patients in a 1,500 bed or 1,200 bed hospital, that's a lot. So part of the emergency planning is thinking about contingency plans, and people are really actively doing that. Um, so that's, that's an important uh, point. Um, I think the other thing I would remind people is it's not too late to get your flu shot. We are seeing still cases of flu uh, that are really severe and there are still deaths that are occurring. So it's not too late to get your flu, flu shot and I would do anything to help myself not get flu because if you get flu and then you're exposed to this, it's quite possible your immune system will be beaten down and you won't really fight off the COVID-19 virus. That's theoretical, but it makes sense and if it scares people into getting their flu shot if they haven't already then I'm fine with that. So the question about younger children and the COVID-19 virus is really fascinating. In most of the early reports there have been very few cases in young children. I mean they have been remarkably absent and people have been noticing that all along. Um, we don't know why that is yet. So viruses are interesting because they have something called a lipid coat. This virus has a lipid coat and that's a fatty covering. That's why we keep telling people to wash their hands. Soap is actually great. It's a detergent. So any good detergent um, will really take out the virus. So soap is fantastic. You definitely can use uh, diluted bleach. Don't want to use full concentrate bleach because that is a little bit too caustic. But um, you know, a really mild bleach solution, um, anything like that will definitely help you kill the virus. The hand gels, the antimicrobial hand gels, the alcohol-based gels also work very well. I know that their supplies are running low in some places, and so you can actually make your own. Uh, there's some good um, guidance about that online, and that can involve something like aloe vera gel with alcohol. Um, so just because you go to the CVS and the hand gel's depleted, again, not a reason to panic. There are ways around that, and probably soap um, is just as effective. I think for travel, it's important to be aware of what the CDC and the State Department says. So right now, the CDC has a great page for travelers where it delineates exactly which countries are at which level of alert. So certainly, if you're talking about a level or two or three country, and those include Japan, South Korea, Italy, Iran, and China, of course, I would not go to those countries personally. I do not think it's the right time. Um, and they define that level by whether or not there's sustained transmission of the virus in the community. That means there's on, it's not just because people are importing it, it's because it's actually spreading within that community. Um, 
Most of the places that are in level one, like France, the UK, Holland, they may have a few cases, but they aren't defined yet as having sustained community transmission. So technically, you could be okay going. I would just say that you should really monitor the news carefully. If it's something you've been planning for two years with your family, and it seems like that situation is stable in that country, then I would not cancel it outright. If you have time, you know, sort of take a step back and think about it. Um, but you got to recognize that this is changing very, very rapidly. Um, and we could be seeing a dramatic upturn in cases, even in those level one countries that we're talking about right now in the coming week.